Okay, so here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another in my multi-part response to Mr. John Lennox, this time on the subject of faith and reason. This one is going to be a little bit different to the other parts, and you will see why in a moment. But just to kick it off then, let me play you the first couple of clips of John Lennox talking about faith. This question of the relationship of faith to reason is one that one comes up against all the time. And the question is often put as if faith and reason were opposed. That, to my mind, is nonsense. It's coupled with an impression that people get that faith is something that occurs only in religious situations and therefore isn't worth talking about. Firstly, faith and reason walk hand in hand in both science and theology. So that we need to unpack this just a little bit. Oh, so John Lennox makes the point that we need to unpack this business of faith a little bit more and I'm very very much inclined to agree with him on that. Now John does his unpacking over the next few minutes of his video. I'm going to do my unpacking here. I did say to you that this video would be a little bit different to the other responses that I've made to John Lennox and the way in which that will be a little bit different is that whereas I resolutely disagreed with John Lennox and practically every other issue, this is an issue where there is a lot of common ground I think. Look, John Lennox makes the point that faith is not just a concept that we use in, in uh, with regards to religion and theology but we also use it in the field of science. I don't think he is going far enough here. The point with this business of faith is that this is a concept that, that we use throughout different aspects of our lives. I made a video on this before. In terms of making this video I went back to have a look at it. I couldn't believe it was five whole years ago back in 2012 and what I attempted to do in that video was to look at the way that the term faith is used by Christians to report what they believe, look at the way that anti-theists interpret that when they throw it back at them, but also look at these different areas in our lives in which we use the term faith, and to try and work out whether we're referring to different discrete things, which is effectively we're using the same word to describe different things or whether there is sufficient commonality to all function under the same definition. I decided on the latter that actually there is quite a bit of commonality within all of these and I'll come to that in a minute but with reference to that let me play you another clip of John Lennox. When we say we have faith in something, we trust it, we believe in it, the next logical question is, what reasons have you got? What evidence have you got for believing in it? So if I say God is the creator of the universe, you are perfectly justified in saying, what reasons have you got? So that we need to distinguish faith from blind faith. What makes this discussion very complex is that Many of the new atheists regard all faith as blind faith. But that is absolute nonsense. So I think John Lennox has a point here. We need to be able to discern between blind faith and faith. And I can understand why that is important to John Lennox. Because when Christians such as himself express a faith in God or faith, in the Bible that is often reported back to them by anti-theists or people that are, have a, a bone of contention with Christianity as being akin to blind faith. But whereas John Lennox wants to totally separate the two as if they're separate entities, I propose instead that blind faith is effectively a special point, a special case. It is one point on the graph of faith. What I'm going to do is let me give you a definition, the definition that I've come up with for faith, and then I'll see how these cases fit in. Faith is when the level of certitude expressed towards a proposition is greater than that which could be justified purely on evidential grounds. So what do I mean by that, and how does that differentiate blind faith from other kinds of faith? Well, let me furnish you with an example. Let's imagine that we were playing Russian roulette. I have this, this six chamber revolver, of course, it's Russian roulette. There is a bullet in one chamber. I spin the chamber and I pass you the gun 
And I ask you, what are the chances that you're now about to blow your brains out? If you report back to me that you have a one in six chance of blowing your brains out, then that is a knowledge claim. And the reason is, is that the level of certitude you're expressing matches up with the level of evidence. You know that there are six chambers, one of those chambers has a bullet in. But imagine that you believe that you have a guardian angel watching over you and making sure that the next chamber is an empty chamber. You might say that as far as you're concerned, you're absolutely certain that you are not going to blow your brains out. That then becomes a faith claim. But it's not an entirely blind faith position because you do have some knowledge. You have some very accurate statistical knowledge and you know that statistics are in your favour. And that there is a very good chance, in actual fact, statistically, that you will not blow your brains out. So it isn't as if your claim is based on nothing, but clearly your level of certitude has gone above and beyond that which the evidence alone would lead you to conclude. Look, let me try and represent this on a graph as I did five years ago, although this graph is tweaked a little bit from the old graph. And this is how I represent it, where effectively you have the evidence on the x-axis and then the level of certitude on the right axis. And what I'm proposing is that what faith is effectively, it's this kind of region of faith where the level of certitude that we espouse is greater than that which the level of evidence would lead us to. What is blind faith? Is it separate from this graph? No, it's a very specific point on this graph. It's this point where our level of certitude is absolute, but we have absolutely zero evidence. But there is another very, very specific case, or actually in some ways quite a general case, but that involves in us placing faith in people, often people that we know very, very well. Let me allow John Lennox to give you this particular example, and then I'm going to discuss it. A man's faith in his wife is not blind. I even discussed this with Richard Dawkins and he quite rightly gave me many reasons why he has faith in his wife. That is, we immediately see that that kind of faith can have reasons. It is evidence-based faith, but it is nonetheless faith. So these kinds of proclamations of faith I think are very interesting and in fact they were central to the first video that I'd made. It was something that I'd been musing on for maybe a year up until making that video and trying to decide for myself, as lots of other people have tried to decide, as to whether that is using faith in the same kind of context as a religious person does. Can we, can we draw those two things together? And I propose that we can. I propose that that fits into the model that I'm making about whether a level of certitude exceeds the level of evidence and when we put when we have faith in our wife or our father or our sister effectively what we're doing is we are standing by them and showing a level of certitude that if we were being honest exceeds the level of evidence let me give you an example that will differentiate between a pure knowledge claim on that basis and a faith claim so imagine that you've got a sister, you've known your sister for decades, she's never shown a violent tendency, she's never seemed aggressive, especially not physically aggressive, happily for your sister she's got a date with a guy, she goes out on that date, when she comes home the guy is found dead in the local park, he's been stabbed to death, your sister is arrested, she's charged with his murder. You know that your sister is not a violent person. You can't believe in a million years that your sister would murder somebody, that she could stab somebody to death in cold blood. And so that you say that as far as you're concerned, you are certain that your sister has not committed that murder. Now, that is a faith claim. Why? Because you're a, you are espousing a level of certitude that exceeds the knowledge. What is the knowledge that you have... The level of knowledge that you have is that your sister is not a violent person. But there are things that you cannot rule out. You cannot rule out the fact that your sister suddenly had a bit of a, a sort of electrical storm in her brain and did something which was totally out of character. You could not rule out the possibility that your sister was extremely provoked and did something out of character. Or that there is a side to your sister that you've never seen before that maybe she has never seen before. So that when that you say that your sister 
minister could not possibly have done that. That is a faith claim. And if you're not convinced by that, contrast it with this second scenario, which was that for the entire evening your sister was at home with you. You had your your dinner with your sister. You then stayed at home and watched a film with your sister. You didn't go to bed with your sister, that would be wrong. But let's say you watched the film till the small hours of the morning and the man was found dead at 11 p.m. So that your sister was with you all that time. Now when you express certitude that your sister did not commit that murder, that is a knowledge claim. Why? Because you know with absolute certainty, short of things which would affect the amount to appeal to global scepticism, you know with absolute certainty that your sister did not, could not have committed that murder because she was in your plain sight all the time. So that you can see there really is a tangible difference between a knowledge claim about somebody that we know very, very well, where the level of certitude is matched by a level of knowledge, and a faith claim about somebody we know very, very well. Where effectively what we're doing, we're championing their cause by expressing a level of certitude that exceeds, maybe by a small margin, the level of knowledge that we have. Again, we could plot the point on our graph and it would be somewhere in this kind of region. It isn't a blind faith claim. We have a lot of evidence about them, but we don't have enough evidence to totally make that claim of absolute certitude based on knowledge alone. So that is where I stand on this. And I do think that in many cases, atheists misportray the faith claims that Christians have as blind faith claims. They're not blind faith claims. They're not to the far left of that x-axis. They're somewhere along that x-axis, at least in terms of what they regard as evidence, because that is what matters here. It's what they regard as evidence. You could view the same things and say, well, I don't regard those things as evidence. In this particular context, that does not matter. What matters is, is that they are making a claim of absolute certitude, but it is based upon some things which they regard as evidence. Do they believe that the entire claim is absolutely evidence? No, because if they did, they wouldn't say that they have faith in God. They would say that they know that God exists and that there is no need for faith that God exists. And the last thought that I want to leave you with is just to ask the question, what is it that a religious person is really expressing a faith in when they say they have faith in God or they have faith in the existence of God? Is it actually a faith in God or the existence of God or is it a faith in the person that told them that God existed? I personally am inclined towards the latter. The reason that most Muslims are Muslims is because they were brought up by Muslim parents. The reason most Christians are Christians, Sikhs are Sikhs, Hindus are Hindus, is because they were brought up by Christian Sikh or Hindu parents. And so the faith that is being shown by these people effectively is a faith that what their parents have told them is true. It's not faith that God exists because really... When you boil it down, there's nothing to go on, right? There's nothing actually to have faith upon other than what you have been told by other people. This is part of what differentiates faith in science with faith in religion. After all, to some extent, we all have to have some faith in scientists because scientists could all be part of some global scientific conspiracy. They could all be manipulating the data or making out that they've conducted experiments that they've never, ever conducted. But short of outright lying to us in that kind of way, right, short of that, it's all there for us to go and check out. We can go and look at that data and interpret it for ourselves. But religion is not amenable to the same kind of empirical analysis because the same kind of data isn't available. So we can't cross-check what the priest says when the priest says God exists, have faith. When our parents tell us as we're growing up, this is your God and he exists and you need to pray to him. We can't cross-check those things in the same way. We can't go and conduct an experiment to falsify potentially what they are saying. 
And so effectively I propose that when a person of a religion expresses a faith claim in God, in many ways what they're really expressing is a faith in the people that told them that that God exists. Interesting to know what you think about that. Interesting also to know what you think about uh, my definition of faith and whether it really does cover all the kinds of usages that we have. Thank you for watching this installment of my response to John Lennox and bye for now.